So you have recently moved to UCLA and have opened a lab there. But uh, so can you talk about the lab? So what is your vision for the lab? What will you be investigating and targeting? Um, yeah, so um, my lab will look at the role of inflammation as a leading driver of different diseases, which include aging, cancer, and metabolic disease. And one area I want to investigate in um, to further investigate is this crosstalk that I discovered between senescent cells and macrophages. Uh, so what we showed in our prior paper is that the SAS or the, these cytokines being secreted by senescent cells can activate the macrophages to consume NAD. And I'm interested in seeing that there's other functions that are um, that the senescent cells are causing the macrophages to, to do as well. So I'm interested in uh, understanding um, other um, phenotypes associated with this crosstalk and macrophages. One I mentioned before is the proliferation of the macrophages. I'm also interested in investigating how this crosstalk is impacting NAD metabolism in aging tissues at a, um, so at a more refined level. And then um, another area I wanna focus on is um, other metabolites um, in addition to NAD that may be um, playing a role in um, modulating aging or, or cancer or, or metabolic disease. Right, interesting. So. As these macrophages, uh, as these macrophages increase, do they kind of um, cause more senescent cells to be created, or, or is that it, that there is no, there isn't that kind of feedback, or do we not know that? That's one of the things you're going to be investigating. Yeah, that's something I like to investigate in this um, kind of crosstalk between them. Um, I, um, so we're not, I don't know for sure, but my mm -hmm. hypothesis is that you get a feed forward mechanism where you have the accumulation of senescent cells, which leads to a pro-inflammatory environment, which leads to recruitment of macrophages to them. Um, this, this leads to the activation of the macrophages to a more um, pro-inflammatory state, which only increases the level of inflammation in that tissue, which causes more tissue destruction, damage, and the accumulation of more senescent cells, which ultimately leads to more macrophages to the tissue. So I think it's kind of a feed forward or a vicious cycle that's occurring during aging. Um, and what we need to do is to find a way to break this cycle, um, whether it's targeting CD38 or the senescent cells or, or the macrophages directly. Right. And then another thing I wanted to mention to you is if you're interested in the, the CD38 knockout mice is that we have been aging them with wild time mice in the Verdant lab, mm -hmm. as well as with the heterozygous mice. And we see that the wild time mice and the knockout mice um, live um, about the same lifespan, but what we're seeing in the male hitters, I guess mice that they, it does seem to extend their lifespan. So um, what this means is that um, having too much CD38 or no CD38 doesn't seem to um, be beneficial, um, but, but having kind of an intermediate amount may be a kind of key there. Right, so heter heterozygous means you have like one knockout gene and one non-knockout gene? Yeah, you have only one copy of it. So you um, have half the expression of the right. normal ones. Yeah. And these mice seem to be the ones that are living longer. So they seem to be the better ones. Yeah. So I, it means that you, if you're going to inhibit CD38, you don't want to do it 100%. Um, you just want to dial it down just a little where you hit, where you have enough to, to maintain the, um, its beneficial functions without um, being detrimental once it's, it gets too active. Right. So can you share, so you've been studying aging and uh, can you share what, so what is your personal protocol in terms of, you know, increasing your health span and, and you know, what, what does your diet and exercise look like? Yeah, so I think for me, what I like to do is um, kind of natural intervention. So um, I, I do take NR, which is a NAD supplement Mm -hmm. um, but I, I try to do everything in moderation. So I don't um, take NR every day, usually just a couple of times a week, just um, as, as a natural supplement uh, to help boost NAD levels. But other ways I try to uh, promote healthy aging um, in myself is by um, kind of doing a 16, eight diet, which is fasting 16 hours mm -hmm. and eating during a period of eight hours, uh, which has um, been shown to be beneficial um, in preventing uh, metabolic disease, but even uh, promoting healthy aging as well. Um, and also, um, yes, a strict following a more strict circadian rhythm, mm -hmm. uh, which includes uh, trying to go to sleep at the same time and sleeping six to eight hours every night, which is kind of tough, but 
um, you know, I try to follow it whenever I can <laughs> um, for the most part. And then, um, yeah, also um, regulating, as I mentioned, w- when I eat my um, meals as well. Um, and of course, exercises, um, what we like to say at the Buck Institute is the best drug to promote healthy aging. Um, so um, it's really important that, um, especially having a job where I sit in an office, that I kind of stay active. Uh, so I try to exercise um, and run about three to four times a week as well as going for um, walks with my dog and even around the UCLA campus, which is a really beautiful campus. So whenever I get a time to to move move around, I try to take advantage of that. Right. So on your diet, uh, can you d- just briefly, what is, what's your kind of macronutrient mix? Um, so uh, me and my wife are really good. Um, not really good. We're, we're really into gardening. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we have a very big garden um, that we plant every year, um, year round, actually. So we, we really try to eat as much uh, vegetables and, um, mm-hmm. and um, leafy greens and other fruits mm-hmm. um, as much as we can in our diet. Um, we also try to eat as many whole grains as possible. So lots of oats and um, brown rice and, and other um, and healthy nuts and, and, and other um, kind of plant-based um, foods as well. Um, as far as um, proteins, um, we we try to avoid red meat, although we eat it sometimes, and we try to stick to more um, fish and poultry. Um, so just, just having a more well-balanced diet of, of natural whole foods and, and avoiding processed and, and fast food as much as we can. Right. Yes. No, I, I get. I definitely get that. Thank you so much for joining us today. So, can you tell people uh, where they can follow your work? And uh, does do, do, is your lab website up yet, or is there anywhere else that people can see what you're doing, where your what your current work is? Um, yeah. So, I have a Twitter. Um, you can follow me at a Covarubius PhD. Mm-hmm. Um, that's my Twitter handle. I do have a website that's under construction, but it should be up in the next few weeks. And uh, once it's um, up and running, I'll hit a link below my Twitter page. So you can find me there, or you could just Google me, my name at UCLA. I'm sure it'll um, pop up on my um, profile here. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. Um, and the work that you're doing, the, the direction you're going, it seems like really interesting. I'm definitely going to be following that with, uh, with interest and it would be uh, great to have you back. So we could talk about inflammation, and aging perhaps next time. I just wanted to mention that um, we have lots of exciting stories coming from my laboratory. And mm-hmm. I just wanted to thank my advisors um, who have what the work that I discussed today, which is um, the laboratory of Eric Burden, mm-hmm. as well as all of our collaborators um, that help with this. So some of the scientists include Abishi Kale, um, Rosalba Peroni, and my um, other um, mentor um, in what we, who we call the queen of senescence, um, Judy Campisi. Okay, excellent. Thank you. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, it would be great to come and uh, talk about the work on your lab. Uh, in, uh, you know, come back and talk about the, the work that you're doing in your lab, because it, it's, I think it's really exciting. And it's right at the front forefront of what we're looking for, you know, what of aging right now. And there's so much uh, going on there. Awesome. Yeah, I look forward to being back and um, having future discussions about um, breakthroughs in aging, aging research. Okay, so I hope that you found the video informative. Please do hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button and choose all for any new video release notifications. It encourages us to continue to create more videos about anti-aging and extending healthy lifespan. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and we'll speak to you again soon.